Well, hey folks, welcome back to another Two Minute Tuesday. I'm Ricky McLean, and this video is part two of a two-part series where we're looking at requirements and uses of encapsulation of mass timber elements. If you haven't seen part one, make sure to check it out in the upper right-hand corner. And in today's video, we're gonna look at three new areas in which we might need to be encapsulating mass timber elements. All right, let's jump right into it you might be looking to use timber encapsulation is if it's helping you meet a specific fire resistance rating. Now, I would say this is probably more common in existing construction where maybe you're doing a renovation and needing to upgrade the fire resistance rating of existing timber elements. However, the methodology or the design theory can still be used on new construction, and that is encapsulating the timber with one or more layers of, say, type X gypsum wallboard using the fire resistance ratings that those layers have and either add that to the fire resistance of the mass timber element, the heavy timber element, or simply achieve all of the fire resistance rating through those layers of non-combustible materials. Now, this is certainly done in the new tall mass timber construction types where you're required in those instances that I mentioned in 4A and 4B, where the code requires you to have timber encapsulation. You're actually using that timber encapsulation as a minimum two thirds of the required fire resistance rating of that element. So for example, in a type 4B building, let's say we're looking at a floor beam and that floor beam has a two hour fire resistance rating requirement. Again, if we're encapsulating that, then we need to get two thirds or 80 minutes of that two hours through non-combustible layers. And so usually that's gonna be two layers of five eighths type X gypsum wallboard. And then the remaining 40 minutes of that two hour duration is achieved through char calculations or other tests that demonstrate that the timber beam being used is adequate for the minimum 40 minutes that it has to contribute to the overall elements fire resistance rating. All right, we might look at encapsulating mass timber elements is when we're using those elements in exterior walls. So specifically talking here about say the use of a CLT exterior wall panel. Now certain construction types prescriptively require the use of timber encapsulation in most cases on the exterior face of those exterior wall panels. So for example, we can use CLT and exterior walls of type 4HT construction, but the code does require that the exterior face of that mass timber panel be covered with something like fire retardant treated sheathing, non-combustible layers. Similarly, if we're looking at using mass timber exterior wall panels in a 4C, 4B, or 4A construction, there is also a requirement for encapsulation on the exterior face of that mass timber panel. In this case, it's a little different. In this case, we're now having to demonstrate that that layer on the outside face of the mass timber exterior wall panel does have a minimum 40 minutes fire resistance rating. And then in 4A, and in some cases in 4B, if we're using mass timber as the exterior wall panel, there is also a requirement for protecting encapsulating the interior side or interior face of those exterior wall panels. If we're using mass timber in the exterior wall of a type five construction building, the code does not have any prescriptive requirements for timber encapsulation. Now it is possible that that exterior wall has a fire resistance rating requirement. So that goes back to our previous point. You might be adding those non-combustible layers to help contribute to the fire resistance rating, but it's not an absolute necessity. If you can demonstrate the fire resistance rating through the mass timber element itself, and then looking at type three construction for exterior walls, the code currently allows fire retardant treed members or non-combustible members for exterior wall framing. So it may be possible to use something like a fire retardant treated NLT or DLT exterior wall panel. And then the last area we're gonna take a look at today is concealed spaces. Now, the code does allow concealed spaces in mass timber structures. This is an area that the building code has been evolving in. There are some differences though, in terms of how we look at encapsulating the timber in different construction types from a building code and design perspective. So for example, if we're using a type three or type five building, we can have concealed spaces prescriptively allowed. If we are doing that though, say a drop ceiling below a mass timber floor panel, then we need to think about sprinkler requirements. If the building is required to be sprinklered with an automatic system such as NFPA 13, then we're gonna need to turn to the NFPA 13 standard and see what it has to say when we do have concealed spaces that are formed with combustible materials such as mass timber. Of course, the other thing with this concealed space discussion is we need to think about what the building code in chapter seven has to say about draft stopping and fire blocking. All right, so in type four HT construction, we can have concealed spaces, but if we do, there are three options. We have to comply with one of three options for protecting the timber within that concealed space. Either we're using non-combustible insulation to fill the cavity between the drop ceiling and the underside of the mass timber floor panel, or we're having sprinkler protection within that concealed space, 
or we are encapsulating the underside of the mass timber floor panel. So that's type 4HT construction. In types 4C, 4B, and 4A, we also can do concealed spaces here. However, if we do, there is a prescriptive requirement across the board that says we do need to encapsulate the mass timber within that concealed space with a minimum layer of non-combustible elements. Well, thank you so much for watching today's video. Again, if you haven't seen part one of this series, make sure you go back and check that out where we look at three other areas where we might need timber encapsulation. I thank you so much for watching today. And as always, we'll see you back here next week. Oh,